gonna be doing a little bit of a different video today. We're gonna to be doing some POV detailing. So I know a lot of you have been asking me, um, you know, on and off YouTube. So we're gonna be going over my detailing routine. So obviously I got perfected this over like a little bit over uh, 10 years of me detailing. So obviously this is pretty good, but I wouldn't say it's the best. There's obviously, you know, different ways that you can learn. Um, most of my techniques I've been kind of getting from like the Obsessed Garage channel. Uh, Matt Mormon, he's a, a god of detailing. So yeah, let's, let's watch the M2. I just went to Chicago, it's pretty dirty. Um, it was raining, so there's a lot of water spots. You can't really see in the camera, but um, if you go up close, you can see there's like a lot of different water spots. Um, I did detail this, I did it ceramic coated. Uh, so everything should be pretty easy. So this is kind of like a maintenance wash procedure. So obviously the first step is making sure you have a good setup. And one of the easiest and most cheapest thing is having one of those lights there. So this is from Amazon, it was like 20 bucks for, you know, all three. Um, it was pretty easy. So yeah, as I mentioned, the setup is really important. So right now it's kind of cold outside, but our water, uh, you know, water is pretty good. Um, I just kind of left the garage a little bit open just so the water can flow. Um, and as you can see, this is the soap I'm using. So pretty much I have a two-phase wash. So I pretty much wash all the wheels and like the rockers first. And pretty much I'm always using the one bucket. I know a lot of people do the two bucket. Um, but what I do is I pretty much just empty the whole bin, uh, the bucket. And then when I'm doing the body, I pretty much wash the wash mitt. Uh, another key thing is, yeah, so this soap I use for the lower half wash. And then for the upper half wash, I use this soap. And then as well as this, uh, turtle wax hybrid ceramic wash solution so this basically adds to the ceramic coating every single time I wash it um, the other thing I do is I try to foam any section that I'm gonna touch just so it adds as a lubricant so this chemical guys compared with that uh, solution there the soap solution and then what's pretty cool is I can just attach this to uh, my spray wand here in my wash bucket so I got my uh, wheel mitt. Uh, I got this brush so I can get in the small crevices. I got my tire brush here. So uh, I like a bit of a like thicker brush, uh, you know, very stiff because I can get in the tire and the brakes. And then this is just like a $1 sponge. So this is just to get inside the wheel well area. So pretty much I'll show you the process for one of the wheels and then we can continue. So obviously I don't use wheel cleaner because um, you know, unless it's like another customer car where, you know, it's really caked on my car since I wash it every week or so, like I don't want to use an abrasive chemicals on it. So this is how we're going to go for now. So first step always is just a good rinse. So obviously I don't have a pressure washer, but this is pretty good. It gets, let me just adjust this here. So this just gets rid of the main chunk of dirt. This gets the surface lubricated, get you know the original layer. So we're gonna put water on everything that we're gonna do. So first is this lower rocker panel, the section here, and then we're gonna do all the way until here. So this will be like the first section, and then we'll do each wheel by itself. And the reason why I want to do the body panel first is. The wheel is way more dirtier, so I want to get, you know, uh, this surface done first. And these PS4S's, they pick up a lot of rocks, so I gotta be go extra close up on it. All right, so now we're gonna attach this part here. Obviously, make sure you test out the area first. And now let's do this. So obviously start with the most dirtiest area first, which is the tires and the wheel well.
So after every pass, this is where I don't need that second bucket is I'm washing every single mitt after every pass. And keep this here. We're gonna take our mitt here and we're just gonna do just this small little section here. Wash this off and then head to the wheels. I'm gonna get all in those lug nut holes. And then what I try to do is just get the face of it just so I can spread the soap around. And then go into all the little details with my finger here. Obviously, the key thing about washing wheels is you don't have to clean everything in the first go. That's a mistake that I see that a lot of people make. You know, do it in small sections, right? Get rid of the big chunk of the dirt, and then move on to the next area. So now, uh, before I go back to the mitt, I'm just gonna go to this small section here. You know, just try to get a little bit of this dirt off first, and then we'll Obviously put in our first water down session. Put down the water. So as you guys can see, this is why I'm saying these wheels are super hard to clean. It's got so many different layers. So we're gonna put the water here. Here. Let's go back in here a second time. Just get a little bit closer. Let's wash this off. And then let's take the wheel mitt again. Let's go at it again. So obviously now I can see there's some areas that I miss, which is perfectly fine. Uh, you know, if you can try to get like a little bit behind it, obviously. This is a very, very tricky wheel to detail. So we're gonna get as much of it as we can. Obviously the fronts are the 19s and the rears of the 20s, so this is like very little clearance. You got little to no wiggle room to mess around. All right, so we just finished up both of these wheels here. Um, obviously you can see like, it's like 99% clear, clean. And obviously when you dry it and you do your final clean, you're gonna have a little bit of spots. So that's where, I'll show you guys at the end where I pretty much used to use some APC and a quick detail and just go over the minor spots uh, by hand. Uh, so the next section obviously is this area. So this area gets very, very dirty and then obviously this exhaust. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna do the same process. So obviously once we finish all the other wheels, we're gonna come back here, just rinse it down a little bit. So I kind of start, so obviously this is uh, steel and this is um, you know plastic. So I pretty much just try to do this whole rear bumper because I've noticed that this area gets like really, really dirty. 
So I'm just gonna do like one level, just kind of like this lower area first. And then obviously when we do our full wash, we'll come back again and do it. Um, so let's put some soap on it. So this is the most important step, making it lubricated. If you're not, if you don't have lubrication, it's gonna get scratched up very, very easily. Take this. Let's make sure we clean it. So obviously I have a grid guard on the bottom of it. I don't know if you guys saw that. Come back here. There's like a little small little section over here that kind of gets missed. Yeah, so you just want to get all, all into that little section there. Um, the key thing for exhaust is obviously if you maintain it really well, you don't really need to do a lot of stuff, but obviously, you know, if you don't get the time, you know, you get a little bit of the buildup. The best thing what I like to do is try to, you know, first step, put some APC. If it's like a really old, like 10 year old car, what you want to do is just take a little bit of steel wool and the soap and be gentle with it. You know, do it in like small passes. And what you'll notice is that it'll break away all that carbon, like the soot. Um, you know, which comes from all the exhaust gases. So now that we've done that, we're gonna finish up the wheels and I'll show you the next steps. All right, so we finished up the wheels. Um, and obviously the most important step, so we cleaned our bucket, uh, completely took out the dirty water, cleaned the grid guard, and we got rid of all the brushes that we were using. And then obviously now we're gonna do the body setup, so we have another new wash mitt for that. And we're gonna pour the soap. So what I like to do is, I kinda just put this over here, uh, take a little bit of this, Put it right on the wash mitt so that way it can like soar, uh, absorb a lot of it. Um, I had that much soap. Uh, later on, I'll add like a little bit more because I keep washing out of it. And then we're gonna put this. So the key to this is it's very like lubricant, like it's very like thin. I tried just using this and like it didn't give me enough suds. So that's why I just like to put both. Um, and uh, honestly, it does help keep the ceramic coating. As you guys can see, like, we just have like a little bit and you can already see like all this. We don't really put in much water, but it's all beating up pretty quick, pretty good. Sorry. So now the main step of the wash. So uh, this is kind of like the, the process that I've had for the past couple of years. So obviously you want to stop, start from top down approach. Uh, the first thing that I do is obviously, um, if you can, like obviously if you're washing inside, you don't have to worry about sunlight. So then I like to do this whole kind of dome area. So that includes the roof, windshield, uh, you know, rear windshield and the glass and mirror assembly. So that's the first thing. Obviously if you're washing outside, which you know, when I didn't have a garage, what I would do is I would do just the half of it. And then the other half I'd wash it and then do the other half. So since we have a garage, you know, we don't have to worry about like water spots or anything. And obviously the car is coated. Uh, we'll start again with the water. As you guys can see, that bead is super nice. Very solid bead work. That coating is doing its work. So yeah, we're just gonna get everything wet. So we're gonna get it wet and then we're gonna go over it with the soapy water from the foam cannon uh, but yeah, obviously this is just to get rid of any light surface dirt right we want to get rid of as much dirt as we can and the whole point is you want to avoid swirling your paint 
So let's put this on here. Obviously, test again. Because these things are pretty good. Oh yeah, and then I guess another thing is I keep it on setting three. Setting five, it does a lot of suds, but um, you know, I kind of like this because I get to, you know, I just put like basically a little drop of it at the bottom and I can use it pretty much for the whole wash process, which is pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and foam her up. So we're only gonna put the section that we're doing. We wanna work in small, small sections, that's the idea. Let's go back here. And the reason why we wanna do small sections is so that we have a controlled approach. Um, we have a proper routine and we know the areas that we're tackling. So once we got that, let's take this out. Let's go to our wash mitt over here. Make sure we get it dabbed and all up that soap. And we're gonna start. So notice how I'm not like pushing it. I'm letting the product do its work. I'm just lightly I don't even use this handle because I feel like I put more pressure, so I just lightly going over it. So obviously like, you know, this car is coated, so it will have a little bit more lubricity to it than, you know, the first time that I did it. But, um, you know, don't put a lot of pressure because, you know, just because you foamed it, you did your foam can and all that stuff, doesn't necessarily mean that you got rid of all your surface contaminants. So we want to go very lightly. I guess another reason why uh, I avoid, I guess like, you know, foaming the whole car and doing it is what I've noticed is the soap will get dry at some point, right? Obviously we're in a closed environment, which is good. Um, but uh, we still wanna make sure that, you know, the soap is still doing its work, right? It's being lubricant. So I see a lot of people that they take like brushes and they go over like, you know, all the little trim pieces. You can do that obviously the first time you ever detail. But obviously the more stuff you touch, the more risk of scratches. So what I usually do is those areas here, I just kind of put my finger here and then I go into that crevice. Um, and obviously the whole point is once you're doing your maintenance washes, you shouldn't have a lot of dirt, um, you know, building up in these small crevices, right? If you're doing the work, you're maintaining it well, you shouldn't have the need to you know, use a goat hair brush every single time. That's defeats the purpose. So obviously we got it. it, looks pretty clean, but never ever trust it. So you're gonna wash it. So we're gonna go over the whole section here, make sure it's clean. And we're gonna go to our grip guard and then make sure we get any other debris off. And now, we're gonna go and we're gonna water this section off. So as you guys can see, the soap is already a little bit kind of drying up. So this is like exactly what I, I figured out as like the best timing of, or I guess the best timing of the sections and the split up. So, you guys can see, I'm not going like too crazy with the water. The first step is when we wanna get like all the hard debris off. This step is we're just, lightly glazing over and getting the soap away, right? We've already done the contact section. Go around here. 
All right, now the next step, which I like to do are basically the door and the rear quarter panel. So obviously if you have a four door, go four door car, you're gonna do that rear door as well. Um, but let's water this section down again. And obviously with the M2, because of the size, what I typically do is like, I kinda, I'm able to go and do it. So obviously, like I said, right? Time yourself, pace yourself out. You wanna do small sections of time. What I've noticed is that when I put the soap can in here, I end up getting here. So might as well, you know, um, you know, do this trunk area as well. And then we can do the bumper separately. Guys, this car, every time I wash it, I just find more and more angles. It's the best part of this car. Obviously, black car ownership is typically one of the hardest, but it is very rewarding. So let's foam up this section here. Also, I guess, you know, compared to like a foam cannon versus a foam gun, obviously you're getting more pressure, but the whole purpose of this is, you know, just to let the product do its work and let it flow down. So I obviously tried foam cannons before. I like it, but I don't know, the hassle of setting up a pressure washer and you know, the output that you get out of it, it's honestly, in my opinion, not too worth it. guys so we're here to our final step which is our final area of the wash so I pretty much do this hood and fender area because once I put soap there it kind of spills over a little here um, obviously if you have bugs I typically like to do this section again uh, but right now it's pretty cold and all the bugs are pretty much dead so we just continue with this section here all right now we're at one of the last steps which is drying it so obviously we want to keep that theme of, of you know avoiding the avoiding touching the car as much as possible so we're gonna do a draw an air dry first and then obviously if there's areas that we've missed or whatever we're gonna touch it up with some quick detailer um, and this is pretty good because uh, you know you get to I guess test your coating so let's go ahead and see how it goes Oh yeah, this is uh, an Adams polish from Meguiar's um, air blaster and then just with an extension cord and notice how I'm holding it so I have this in one hand and this in one hand to avoid uh, touching the paint. So let's go.
so we just finished up drying the car. Looks pretty good. You know, did our first inspection, didn't see any spots that we missed. So obviously now the next step. Uh, so I just grabbed a towel. Um, I actually have two towels here, like a good one and a bad one. I mean, good as in like I could use on the body surface and uh, like one for the other. Uh, it's pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and wipe all the door jams and then you know if there's any spots that I missed on the wheels. Um, door jams obviously on this black car get hidden a lot uh, but on a white car you can see like so much filth so always make sure to do this thing. So now to my last and favorite step of course is tire shine. This stuff makes a huge difference. So I'm using just some chemical guys tire shine. Uh, the key thing is I'm gonna spray on like just a little bit on to uh, the tire so you can see just so I can get it spread and then I'm gonna put some on the brush here which is like a brush I got from Amazon and now we're just gonna slowly do this so this brush honestly um, I use on my truck which is why I need like a bigger brush I'm looking to get like a smaller brush for this because I noticed that it's like slinging onto the rim just a little tiny bit. So if you guys have any recommendations, hit it away. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna finish it up. Um, stay tuned for more detailing content. And if you guys are, you know, in the Midwest area and want to get your car detailed like this, uh, let me know. Should be a message at Turbo Detailing on Instagram. Thank you.